Welcome back everybody. Continuing the preparation series on SAT Math Level 1. And we're now Problem 4. And what the Problem 4 says is, in the figure above, what fraction of the circular region with center O is shaded? And as you can see, I have a circle right here. Uh, and this is the shaded region over here. And we have an angle of 120 degrees. So in order to solve this, first I'm just going to uh, notice a couple of things. And the first thing is that those two angles over here, this one, with this one are actually vertical so this angle has to be 120 degrees as well now those angles are actually vertical as well so if this one is X what is this one gonna be well this one is gonna be X as well and what we know is that the whole circle is 360 degrees so if you are to add all of those up you should get 360 so X plus X plus 120 plus 120 is equal to 360. So that gives us that 2x, if we now solve for x, is equal to 120. So x is equal to 60 degrees. And let me just write that down with a different color. Okay, so x is equal to 60 over here, and x is equal to 60. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bisect this angle over here. And why am I doing this? Well, I notice that this angle over here is 60 degrees and this is 120. That's double this angle. But if I bisect it, I get the exact same angle as this one, right? So if I bisect it, I'm going to get an angle of 120 divided by 2 and that's going to be a 60 degree angle. So let me just bisect this whole circle. Now let me write down the angles that each one of those is going to be. So that's going to be 60 as well. And you pretty much start to figure out what we're doing over here. And as you can see, what we've actually done right now is we've divided the whole circle in pieces equal to one another. And if we count those pieces, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pieces. And out of, the, out of those 6 pieces, which are equal to each other, we make up the whole circle. So how many of those pieces are actually uh, shaded? And that's 2, actually. This one over here and this one over here. And what we're looking for is the fraction of the, cir the circular region over uh, with center O is shaded. So it's a shaded area over this, the total area of the circle. So let me write this ratio, this fraction down. So shaded area over the circle area. Circle area. And as I said before, we know that only two pieces are shaded, so that's two, over the whole circle, which is made of those six pieces over 6. And this can be translated to 1 third. And that's what we're looking for. That's the answer. So the correct answer, let me write this down. Correct answer is D. So question number 5 asks, which of the following is the graph of a linear function with both a negative slope and a negative y-intercept? And let's just make a quick parenthesis and explain what a negative slope and a negative y-intercept mean. Well, the slope is the incline of your line. And if you're going from left to right and your line goes up, that means you have a positive slope. But as you're going from left to right, and as in this case, and your line is going down, that means you have a negative slope. Another way to actually view at it is if you have an acute angle, your line is making an acute angle with the x-axis, as in this case, you have a positive slope. But if it, it is making an obtuse angle, that means you have a negative slope. And remember, you always count from the x-axis counterclockwise in order to find the, the angle that your line is making with the x-axis. So uh, the y-intercept is basically where your line meets the y-axis. So in this case, it's this, for example, and in this case, it's this one, and hopefully you actually get the point. In this case, it's this one, and it's just the point where the x-axis is meeting your line. And for it to be negative, you want it to be on this side, right here, over here. Okay, so let's just have a look and determine which of those lines actually fits our criteria. So this first line A has a slope of zero because it's horizontal, plus it has a positive y-intercept. Uh, y now, option B has a positive slope and a positive y-intercept, so it's out of the question, actually. 
Option C has a negative y-intercept, but a positive slope. But we still need a negative slope, so it doesn't fit us. Option D has a positive y-intercept, so we can't take that. So we're left with option E, and that's probably the correct option. But let's just have a look. So uh, it has a negative y-intercept right here. And as you can see, as we're going from left to right, the line is going down, which means we have a negative slope. So the correct answer is correct answer is E. Correct answer is E. On to problem six. If k squared minus four is equal to four minus k squared, what are all the possible values of k? So you can just go ahead and solve for k over here. So k squared minus four is equal to four minus k squared. So if we actually move k squared to the other side, we get that k squared plus k squared, and we move four to the other side is equal to four plus four. So two k squared is equal to eight, and then if we divide both sides by two, we get that k squared is equal to four. Now here comes a critical part, and that is k is equal to plus or minus root four, which gives us that k is either equal to two or that k is equal to minus two. And that is if you substitute two over here, you get that two squared is equal to four. But also if you substitute minus two over here, you get that minus two squared is equal to four. So the correct answer is, correct answer is D. So problem number seven says that if b to the two x plus one is equal to b to the three x minus one for all values of b, what is the value of x? And since both bases are b, and we need both sides of the equation to be the same, the exponents of those have to be the same, have to be equal. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, what if b was one? Wouldn't we always get one, therefore it wouldn't matter what exponent we had? Well, yeah, but it clearly states that it has to be true for all values of b, not just for one, for all values, which means that the exponents always have to be the same. So 2x plus 1 has to be equal to 3x minus 1. And if we get 3x to the other side, we get that minus x, and then we get 1 to the other side is equal to minus 2. And if we multiply both sides by minus 1, we get that x is equal to 2. So the correct answer correct answer is A.